Let's have a look now at the snap and grid drafting settings. I'm going to switch polar off. I don't need that on at the moment. And you'll see why when we use snap and grid in a moment. Now, the good thing about all of these drafting settings is I can actually just drag, get the pointer over one like that and right click and a shortcut menu displays. I'm going to go to settings and I can now set up all of my snap and grid settings. So you'll notice there, look at the top, snap and grid tab, snap on and grid on. Now I'm using a blank imperial drawing right now. So my snap X spacing and my grid spacing here need to be set accordingly. Now, the good thing about snap and grid are that you can set them up so that they work together. I'm going to set my grid to two inches apart. So that's the grid lines that you will see in a moment. If I press tab, it updates the grid Y as well. Now we're doing two and two there. You don't want a major line every five. You want it every four, let's say. And I'm going to do the same here with the snap, but I'm going to utilize the snap to work in conjunction with the grid. So what do you think I would set the snap to? Well, let's say that I want to snap to the midpoint of each grid line. Each grid line is two inches long. So if I change this now to one and tab that there, one and one, I've set up a grid of squares that are basically two inches square. But because my snap is set to one inch, I can snap in between those squares. And you'll see what I mean in a moment when I click on OK. You can see the grid squares on the screen. If I hover, I can now snap to those grid points. And you'll see why. If I go and draw a line, as soon as I get a command going, can you see I can snap and that distance between each grid line is two, but because I've actually got that snap setting to one, I can snap in between to the increments of one. So that makes my life really easy because I can draw a neat square straight away that I know is two inches square. So there's my square. But the nice thing about it, I can draw another line now. And I can draw a line midpoint to midpoint, press enter. That might be some sort of labeling symbol where there's some text in there and there's some text in there. But you saw how quickly I was able to draw that using snap and grid. Notice if I'd had polar on, that would have allowed me to also do the horizontal and vertical. However, snap and grid also performs very well. If I just right click and repeat line, if I want to draw angled lines, if I want to draw a diamond symbol now, I can just move along like that to there, press enter to close the line command, and there we are. I've got a nice diamond symbol. Again, that might have a number in it representing a wiring run or something, and I can just place that symbol into the AutoCAD electrical drawing. Now, as we move further through AutoCAD electrical, you'll see that you don't have to create any symbols. They're already in the symbol libraries provided. But if you need to create a custom one, you can see how quick and easy it is using Snap and Grid. Now, Snap and Grid, you'll notice, can be quite clicky. So if I go back to the line command, right click and repeat line, it can get a little bit irritating when it keeps snapping like that. So the trick is, if I just want to draw a line now without any Snap or Grid, I come down here to the drafting settings, just switch those off, and now... I can just draw a freehand line without any snapping or gridding, as you can see. So it works very, very well. It allows you to draw neatly and accurately very, very quickly. All you've got to do, set the settings with the right click first. So right click and settings over snap and grid. Then switch on your snap and your grid. And there they are. The lovely thing is, is that they're always there. You just switch them on or off. A very useful tool for drafting things quickly but more importantly, accurately.